We spent over 20 hours in our press copies of Small Land Survive the Wild's early access, and oh boy, it's got something truly special going on. Keep watching for our full review. Hi everyone, this is Jason from Realm Space Gaming, and we've spent the last week delving deep into Small Land Survive the Wilds, taking note of the finer points of our time there in order to bring you a review and help you decide whether or not Small Land Survive the Wilds is for you. Starting with our first impressions, the character creator is simple but user friendly and allows you to rather quickly create the small folk character you want to play. There isn't loads of variety, but there's enough that you and your friends aren't likely to end up with characters that look identical, with fun highlights here being the multiple fairy-like skin colours and different antenna, hairstyles and hair colours. Immediately after making your character, you'll be able to create a new world and either host it as a multiplayer accessible world, add in a password if you desire, or just jump straight into single player. There's a quick tutorial that teaches you the basics of the game, and then you're introduced to a few NPCs who will teach you the basics of the game's lore, giving you access to a few crafting options and some direction on what to do next. Finally, you'll pass by a number of tutorial statues that'll tell you a bit more about the game mechanics, such as that falling will kill you quickly, as will any attempt to jump into water. From here, the game truly opens up, and you're free to explore onward in any direction. We found this to be both a good and a bad thing, good in the sense that you're given the freedom to discover, and the world is a pretty big and beautiful place. But it's also a dangerous place, and without too much direction on where to go, you can quickly wind up dead in the mandibles of a hungry beetle, ant, grasshopper, or other hazard. Dying in Small Land Survive the Wild drops all items but for the ones equipped into a gravestone at the location of your death, meaning that you have to go back and collect it. You can only have one gravestone at a time, however, so if you die on the way back to collect your things, your items are gone for good. For this reason, exploration can be brutally punished if you're not prepared, and your first priority will be to gather basic resources in the relatively safe starting area and build yourself a shelter home to keep coming back to. You'll need a bed to set your spawn point, and skip the more dangerous nights, and a campfire to cook food and keep your stamina up so you can sprint and fight. You'll also need a workstation at which to make bandages for healing yourself, weapons to defend yourself, and tools for collecting more resources. Make sure to craft yourself a bow as soon as you can, as you'll definitely need this for some of your earlier fights and to hit flying insects. Once you've got all of this set up, you're in a good position to start exploring the area and you've got a home to come back to with the treasures you might find. Gameplay after this point mostly consists of going to new areas, harvesting new materials to reach the next tier of equipment, talking to the NPC in that area to acquire new crafting options, and fighting bosses either to complete NPC quests or acquire crafting materials. You can also tame insects and other small animals and use them as mounts or pack mules, and each has a different skill such as the lizards being able to fight for you and the grasshoppers being able to traverse quite far in a single leap, seemingly immune to fall damage. Callum and I played this game cooperatively just the two of us, but you can play multiplayer with up to 10 people. So, what did we think of it? Starting out with the world and the graphics, Merge have created a truly beautiful environment, expansive in size and direction, and with pretty good graphics quality at that. We didn't notice any dips in performance when running the game on medium or high settings and were comfortably able to record for most of the time that we were playing. The sound design is fantastic and you can learn a lot about your environment through the sound alone, listening carefully for insects in the area and listening to the specific sounds they make in order to tell if they're friendly, inquisitive or aggressive. This goes for the music as well, and that was a very nice touch. As far as the world design goes, the different areas each come with unique challenges and dangers, and the scale is constantly impressive in the way it comes across through the world. We did have difficulties too, however, as progression through crafting tiers requires very specific materials, and you're not really given any real direction on where to go to get these, and you might end up going every wrong direction first. Bear in mind that dying often means restarting from scratch if you die on the way back to retrieve your gear, so exploring can be costly despite being necessary to progress. Flint was particularly necessary to progress early on, but despite this, it's in a particularly difficult to find area which is also particularly dangerous. It's over here if you need to find it for yourself by the way. Other notes we made is that buffs shown in your inventory don't currently show a tooltip that tells you what they do, chests store a little bit too little for the amount of materials you need, and there's no way we found to label them all to help organize all your items. Finally, we only encountered two bugs during our time playing the game. No, not the insect kind, the code kind. The first was Callum's HUD disappeared at one point and the button to bring it back in the menu just didn't work, so he had to rejoin the server and everything was fine after that. The other bug was a bit more common, and this is that a lot of the time when harvesting edible mushrooms, bits of the mushroom will fall into the stem and you won't be able to pick them up. We suspect this will be patched fairly soon, but until then, just make sure you hit the harvest button as the mushroom falls down so you can get it before it falls into the stem. 
These difficulties aside, and considering that the game is in early access, what we've seen and played through was quite impressive. The world was taxing and brutal, but that only made our victories all the sweeter, and it was overall a fun time, with epic boss fights and epic loot. Even in the 20 plus hours that we spent in the game, we were unable to reach the highest tiers of gear available, and it felt like there was still a lot more to unlock, such as the grappling hook from the trailer, or the ability to mount a dragonfly. Because of this, we believe you're certainly going to get plenty of hours out of this game. Rather than comparing Small Land to Grounded, we found it was actually far more fair to compare it to Valheim, as it's a much more similar game, and if you're a fan of open world survival crafting games with a bit of a brutal world, then you'll probably enjoy Small Land Survive the Wilds. Even if you're not, the 10 player multiplayer makes this an enticing game just for providing such a fun world to mess around in with your friends. On a final note, it's important that games in early access have a plan to grow so they don't become abandoned, and Merge just recently announced a packed roadmap to give us a peek into what they're working on adding to the game. This roadmap includes new mounts, tools, enemies, weapons, locations, NPCs and more, and that's all just in the first content update expected this year. This puts Small Land Survive the Wilds in a great position to grow after release, so there'll be a lot to look forward to. In light of its current position in early access and the features that we still have to look forward to, we're happy to be able to recommend Small Land Survive the Wilds. We hope that this video helped you decide whether or not Small Land Survive the Wilds is for you. If it did, drop a like and subscribe if you want us to keep covering games like Small Land, as we'll bring you the best guides that are quick and let you jump straight back into gaming. I also encourage you to check out our Discord server, where we're growing a passionate community of gamers and giving away some of the top titles. It's a place just to have fun, talk about your favorite games, and connect with the community here at Realm Space Gaming. My name is Jason, and here's a big thank you from everyone at Realm Space Gaming for watching, and don't forget to enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah.